Hi there, Marius here with the Resuscitation Coach. On this channel we do all things resuscitation, so please consider subscribing. In today's video we'll be reviewing the Pediatric Advanced Life Support or PALS Bradycardia Algorithm. So let's jump straight in. Here we go. The Pediatric Bradycardia with a PALS algorithm outlines the steps for evaluating and managing the child who presents with symptomatic bradycardia. Once you identify bradycardia, assess for signs of cardiopulmonary compromise. If there are no signs of cardiopulmonary compromise, support the ABCs as needed, consider oxygen, observe and perform frequent reassessments, get a 12-lead ECG, and identify and treat underlying causes. If you find signs of cardiopulmonary compromise, like acutely altered mental status, signs of shock, hypertension, a child with primary bradycardy may benefit from evaluation by a pediatric cardiologist, but do not delay initiating emergency treatment if symptoms is present. As always, start with the airway, support the airway and position the child or allow the child to assume a position of comfort or open the airway if needed. On the breathing, give oxygen in high concentration like using a non-rebreather mask if available. Assist ventilations as indicated using a bag mask if needed and ensure to attach a pulse oximeter to monitor the oxygen saturation. On the circulation, check the heart rate and blood pressure. Attach the ECG monitor or defibrillator. In bradycardia cases, a defibrillator with transcutaneous spacing capability should be used if available. Establish vascular access using an IV or IO. Perform a 12-lead ECG if it's available, but do not delay treatment. Obtain appropriate laboratory studies like potassium, glucose, ionized calcium, magnesium, blood gas, and a toxicological screen. If the child's heart rate is below 60, despite good oxygenation and ventilation, and has serious signs and symptoms, immediately start with high-quality CPR. High-quality CPR means pushing hard, pushing fast at a rate of 100 to 120 pushes per minute. Remember to allow full chest recoil. Do not interrupt CPR for longer than 10 seconds and do not hyperventilate. You want to give just enough air to see visible chest rise. You need to push down one third of the anterior posterior chest. Get an IV or IO access. If neither IV or IO access is available for medication delivery, the intertracheal or the ET route is the third option. Epinephrine is indicated for symptomatic bradycardia that persists despite effective oxygenation and ventilation. Epinephrine has both alpha and beta adrenergic activity. The beta adrenergic activity increases the heart rate and cardiac contractility, and the alpha adrenergic activity causes vasoconstriction. The effects of epinephrine may be reduced by acidosis and hypoxia. This makes the support of the airway of utmost importance. Your epinephrine dose, IV, is 0.01 milligrams per kilogram. That is 0.1 moles per kilogram of the 0.1 milligrams per mole concentration. And you can repeat this dose every 3 to 5 minutes. 
your ET dose is 0 0.1 milligrams per kilogram or 0 0.1 moles per kilogram of the 1 milligram per mole concentration. For persistent bradycardia, consider a continuous infusion of epinephrine 0 0.1 to 0 0.3 mics per kg per minute. A continuous epinephrine effusion may be useful, particularly if the child has responded to a bolus of epinephrine. Titrate the dose against the effect. Atropine sulfate is an anticholinergic drug that accelerates sinus or atrial pacemakers and enhances AV conduction. Administer atropine instead of epinephrine for bradycardia caused by increased vagal tone. Cholinergic drug toxicity, for example organophosphates or complete AV blocks. Atropine and also pacing are preferred over epinephrine as the first choice treatment of symptomatic AV blocks due to primary bradycardia. Atropine is not indicated for AV blocks from secondary bradycardy due to reasons like hypoxia or acidosis. The rationale for using atropine rather than epinephrine in these situations is that epinephrine can cause ventricular arrhythmias if the myocardium is chronically abnormal or hypoxic or ischemic. If the child does not respond to atropine, use epinephrine. Atro may be used for the treatment of second degree block type 1 and 2 and third degree AV blocks. The healthcare provider should recognize, however, that symptomatic AV blocks may not respond to atropine and the child may require pacing. For your IV or IO route, give 0.02 milligrams per kilogram our minimum dose of atropine is 0.1 mg and our maximum dose is 0.5 mg. You may repeat the dose once in 5 minutes. Note, larger doses may be required for organophosphate poisoning. For the intertracheal route, give 0.04 to 0.06 mg per Kilogram. The IV or the IO administration is preferred, but if it's not available, atropine can be administered via the ET tube. Because the absorption of atropine given by the ET route is unreliable, a larger dose, typically two to three times that of the IV dose, may be required. As mentioned in the previous slide, Atropine and pacing are preferred over epinephrine as the first choice treatment of symptomatic AV blocks due to primary bradycardia. Temporary transthoracic or transvenous pacing may be life-saving in selected cases of bradycardia caused by complete heart blocks or abnormal sinus node function. For example, pacing is indicated for AV block of the surgical correction of congenital heart disease. The identification and treatment of potentially reversible causes of bradycardia is of utmost importance. The two most common potentially reversible causes of bradycardia are hypoxia and increased vagal tone. Also consider hypothermia and medications as a cause. Be aware that after heart transplantation, the patient might not respond to medications like atropine, and early pacing may be indicated in these situations. If you benefited from this video, kindly like, subscribe, and smash that notification bell. We'll see you in our next video. Have a fantastic day.